Hi, this is James from Tabletop Gaming Guild, and today we're going to take a look at Cartographers. This is published by Thunderworks Games. It is a 1 to 100 player game. So we're going to go down to the table here. I'm going to give you a general overview, just a really quick overview of how the game plays in general. And then we're going to come back and I'm going to give you my final thoughts on Cartographers. Okay, so we're going to look at Cartographers. So... I'm not going to go over all the rules. I'm just going to give you a general gist on how to play the game. The game comes with this 100 sheet pad of um, player um, sheets. Now, that's why it says it's 1 to 100, but you can go on their website and print these out if you want. I'm actually laminating about 10 of them. And they're two-sided. So at the start of the game, you have to everyone has to decide whether they're going to start with this side or this side so in this game you're going to have uh, where you're not going to be able to cover the mountains on this side you're not going to be able to cover the mountains or this chasm in the middle so this one's a little bit more difficult side so everyone's going to pick their side and start the game you can also do some of this other stuff like you can put your um, your player name you can put your title or whatever you want it to be and you can put your family crest name and draw your family crest so it's pretty neat you can make these look pretty cool now to start out the game you're going to set out this a b c and d you're going to then shuffle and flip over four different scoring cards okay then you're going to Put these in order, so there's going to be spring, summer, fall, winter. And notice that these have an A, B, a B, C, a C, D, and a D, A. Now these will actually refer to what actually scores this round. So in the first round it's going to be A and B. So these are the two things that you're going to look for in order to score. And I'm not going to go over each one of them. They have it uh, listed on the card what they actually you need to do to get the points. And also there's a better explanation if you need it inside the book but these are pretty straightforward and these are going to be scoring and you're going to score at the end of each of these four different rounds and the person with the most points at the end of the game wins now this number eight here is going to determine when the next round starts and i'll get to that in a second so the last part of setup is you're going to take all these cards and you're going to shuffle them up which is these are going to be the cards you're going to flip over to draw on your board you're going to take these four monsters and you're going to shuffle them up, place one in this deck, and shuffle it up. All right. Then we're going to go along, and each person's going to flip over a card. So the first player will flip over a card. Now, it doesn't actually matter. One person could just flip over the cards if you want. Now, that's cool because it's going to be the first different card. We're going to set this aside and pretend we didn't draw it. And we're going to draw this one first. So on this card, it's going to have a couple different train types. And you're going to look at what train types you're looking for on your extra points. And what train types this one offers. And it has a shape. Now this shape, uh, you can flip it or, or um, change it in any direction you want except for diagonal. Um, so you can flip it, rotate it, whatever. Uh, and then place it. Now this one's just a straight line, so it's not a really good example. And then you're going to pick one of these two terrain types to put down now if you can't place this one down for any reason on the board you would put down a single one of that train type which would be the least efficient way of doing it so when you pick your type you're going to let's say i picked picked water because i just want to build up water there's a couple different things to note on this board you can't draw over top of this mountain you can drop over draw over top of the ruins but i'll tell you in a second why you might want to reserve that so for right now i'll just say I will go here and then you're going to draw a picture of the train type symbol. So I did water. So that's my little thing. Here's water. Now let's say the only other special type is going to be this one. I, I flip a rune. So if you flip a runes, you will get um, to, you'll get bonuses for covering over top of these different runes. Well, Technically, you have to draw over one of these runes. Sorry, you don't get points, but you have to draw over the rune. So I'm going to flip the other one, 
and that's going to state that I have to place this picture has to go over one of these runes. Um, so in this case, I'll place it here. Now, if I wasn't able to do any of this, I would have to only place one uh, uh, color in one of these only if I can't go over a rune. So this next, the runes limit the next one to be able to have to cover over a rune. And you still pick, I'll just pick water. This is a really bad way of scoring because I'm not gonna score very many points. But one thing to keep in mind though is that you will get points if you can cover uh, horizontally and vertically uh, spaces adjacent to a mountain. So once I, so if I put another shape here for some reason, and uh, we'll just do more water just to show. I could then fill in one of these coins. And at the end of the round, however many coins each coin I have is gonna be a point. So you're gonna to continue to do this and you're gonna see these little times in the end, in the upper left-hand corner, once the time equals to or exceeds this round, the next round starts. So I'm looking for the number eight to be hit or exceeded. When the next round starts, right before the, when the next round ends, you're gonna use the little score pad here to count up your score. You can get negative points for having monsters out, which we didn't have a monster go out yet, and you get points for your coins, and you get points for how the B and C, or A and B scoring for spring. So you're gonna to check to see how many of that, you're gonna add up your points and place them on the score pad. Now, if we had a monster flip, you would rotate your sheet as it's shown. So this one would go to the player on the left. The player on the left would take this little pattern and put it somewhere on my board. Now for every horizontal and vertical um, spot adjacent to the monster that I didn't cover, I lose a point at the end of each round. So these are really important to uh, Pick a good place uh, to place on your opponent's one and also really important for you to figure out how to work around so you don't lose those points. So if spring would end, then you go to summer, you would take another monster and put it in the deck. So you can have multiple monsters and they're gonna flip in this deck. After you shuffle them all. All right, so that's basically going to be it. You're going to go through all these different rounds. You're going to flip these cards. You're going to start covering this thing. You're going to score what it says, in this case, B and C. And you're going to keep going to the end of the fourth round and the person with the most points wins. Now, I didn't go over a lot of the rules, but that's generally the gist on how to play the game. So you go through the four, four rounds. You've got to pay attention to the timer on here. You flip the cards. You can run into monsters. And like I said, you're trying to cover this map with uh, the proper shapes to get the most points for what you're aiming for. And you can look ahead, since these are all out, you can look ahead to see what you're gonna get in the future too. And since there's a pretty good deck of scoring opportunities, there's a lot of replayability in this game. Um, but that is Cartographers, a role-playing tale. Let's go head back to the table here and I'll give you my final thoughts on the game. So I really like this cartographer game. Um, it's a flip and write, whatever. I really like the roll and write, flip and write area. I really like the um, having to fill out the different shapes on the board and worry and like um, worrying about the different scorings that are going to trigger. I really like the uh, I've got the monster attack cards and being able to mess up and, and then having to deal with those issues on my own board. And I really like that it's double-sided where I can do the regular game or the um, more difficult game. 1 to 100, uh, you probably want to print out some of these. But you could do it. It really doesn't really matter. You could do whatever number. This is also a game that's great if you're still playing games over Skype where you can just have one person show the camera of the, uh, the main components of the board and everyone else has their own sheets which are the sheets are available on thunderworks website so you can print more of them on there so if you do play your first game of 100 people and use all the sheets you can get more i'm going to laminate like 10 or so of them so that i always have this available 
and this game here is if you like the rolling rights and flipping rights this is a great game it's very easy to teach so you could play this at family functions or people that aren't really into board games per se and they'll still have a great time it's very inexpensive too price point for what you get so this is a great value game so that is my final thoughts on cartographers thank you for watching